Hello folks and welcome back to another one and done series here. Today, got something super super exciting for you. Uh, if you've been following some of the recent uh, Magic tournaments uh, and you also are a fan of the Jeskai colors, uh, you'll know that in GP Hong Kong uh, there was a s just, I don't even know how to describe it, but just the most wonderful deck list you've ever seen in your entire life. Uh, and they got uh, it got top four at GP Hong Kong. Uh, Shota Takao, uh, I believe was his name, and he uh, got third place at GP Hong Kong with Jeskai Tempo. Now, obviously, you see the deck list in front of you. Now, at a first glance, it looks oh, alright. I see some bolts, I see some helixes, some guys, some spell quellers. Everything looks looks about normal, right? Uh, but not quite. This list is very, very unique. Um, it plays 23 lands, which is Reasonable. Usually you'll find Jeskai Temple plays anywhere between 23, usually 24 lands when they're on the Cryptic Command builds. But you'll, f first thing you notice is there's a lot of fast lands here. You have 3 Spire Bluff, 2 Inspiring Vantage. Now, you might think to yourself, well, this deck doesn't play Cryptic Command. I guess that that's okay, right? Well, not only does it not play Cryptic Command, it plays a lot of 1-drops, okay? And being able to cast multiples, uh, different 1-drops that you have... Uh, painlessly off of your lands is impossible to understate. Uh, I've always been a fan of the fast lands. Uh, when I played just kind of Hiri and the first fa and the fast lands first came out uh, in Kaladesh, I played four in just kind of Hiri, and I top aided the SCG Classic uh, in November of 2016 with it, and I was very amazed by the card. And that was a deck that was casting, you know, a lot of four drops. It had like four Nahiris, uh, like a Cryptic and Verdict or something like that. You know what I mean? That's like six. Six four drops. How can you play these fast lands, right? But here we have. Let me let's start off at the top, right? Four path to exile. Uh, it's nice to be able to cast your path to exiles. Although those are usually cast a little bit later in the game, unless you're playing against a very aggressive deck. Uh, but it's nice to be able to cast those without taking any damage. Uh, you have obviously opt. Uh, three opt is just you know uh, a cantrip to play off of your uh, off of your spire buff canals or whatever you got. Uh, really good cantrip to pair with Snapcaster Mage because you can do it at instant speed. And for a tempo deck, this is really important. Now we start seeing some weird things here. Spell Pierce. What in the main deck? Uh, that is definitely not something you see very often. But that is what we have here. We have two Spell Pierce main deck. That's what Shota opted to do. Uh, play two Spell Pierces in his main to pair with his two main deck Grim Lava Mancers and his three main deck Figure of Destiny. I mean, what in the world? If you're not familiar with Figure of Destiny, it's basically a, a card you can kind of level up in a sense where uh, for one red or a white, you can turn its base power and toughness to a 2-2. And then if you had done that, you can then pay 3 to make it a 4-4. And then if you had done that, you can pay 6 to make it an 8-8 with Flying and First Strike, which is obviously a pretty insane clock. So what that means is this card is, you know, pretty good at almost every point of the game. It's either a 2-2 for 2, or it's a, uh, you know, 4-4 four, for four, 4, or it's a, oh god, I'm counting them, or it's a 8-8 eight, eight for 7. And uh, I guess that's not quite true, right? You obviously have to pay the cost as you go. So it's, it's that, that was a little off, right? It's a 4-4 four, four for, five, for 5, and it's a, uh, alright, well, you can do the math yourself, right? My point is, uh, Figure of Destiny always has something that it can turn into to try to be relevant for the game, whereas other one-drops like Delver can get quickly outclassed and are not even guaranteed to flip uh, in the late game, right? So that's one of the cool things about Figure of Destiny here that you won't see in any other list except Shota's. This is something that he has innovated uh, as far as I'm aware, and this is a really sweet take on Jeskai Tempo. Uh, now that was, of course, and then you pair that with four lightning bolts, you got a pretty sweet... Um, you know, turn one uh, capabilities from this deck. Multiple different things you can do, uh, and you can basically play off of, you know, one or two lands for the first few turns of the game because you have a lot of interaction uh, around this one and two mana area. But let's move on to two mana, right? Three Lightning Helixes, just a fantastic burn spell that also gains you life, swings races, just destroys burn. Fantastic card. Four Snapcast Mage. Obviously, we've got quite a few instants and sorceries we want to flash back here. Namely, Path, Bolt, and Helix. But you also have Spell Pierce and Opt. Um, and so Snapcaster Mage is pretty clear why he's in the deck. And then you also have two Mana Leak because uh, I like Mana Leak because in these tempo style decks because you don't want the game to go very long. 
Obviously, if the game ends up going like 10 turns, Mana Leak is a pretty dead draw. But I would say that you're pretty unfavored at those points in the game anyways. Uh, where you're mostly gaining your advantage from is the early game with Mana Leak. Uh, it's essentially a 2-mana counterspell. So that's what I really like, and that's also less restrictive on your mana. So you can cast it off of a Spire Bluff and an Inspiring Vantage, or any other land plus any other, any blue source plus Inspiring Vantage lets you cast it. Unlike Logic Knot, which in the control decks is designed so that if the game goes long, it's still live. Whereas this deck doesn't want to go long. So uh, the idea is here to capitalize on the early game and have more versatility in the uh, early to mid game. Then in the three drop slot, if you're familiar with Jeskai Tempo, you'll know these are this is the core of Jeskai Tempo. Four Spell Queller, three Geist of Saint Traft, um, just the core of these Jeskai Tempo builds. And then at the top, we have even more spicy stuff. Got two Gideon Allies in the card. It's a very sweet card to just slam if your opponent's just been answering you one for one. Oh, kill your figure destiny. Oh, uh, I guess I mana leak you back. Oh, you bolted my Spell Queller. That's rough. Hey, let me just slam Gideon. Now answer a Planeswalker. So Gideon is this card that's very hard to interact with, doesn't die to bolt, uh, and generates a lot of value. So really, really like the inclusion of Gideon here. And uh, my favorite, got a one of Restoration Angel just sitting in the back here. Great card to blink your Snapcaster Mages. Uh, go ahead and save your Figure of Destinies and Grim Lava Mancers from removal, although that will reset Figure of Destiny. Uh, you can save your Spell Queller from removal, uh, and you can save your Geist mid-combat. Uh, so there's a lot of good things going on here. You can even save your Gideon after you've plus one him and your opponent path to exiles it. Nope. Restoration Angel saves the Gideon. And you still get to use his ability once you get back to your main phase. So a lot of cool things going on in this deck here. A lot of little neat interactions. While each card is not necessarily individually powerful, there's a lot of tempo synergy going on here to try to just beat your opponent out of the game. So I really like Shota's approach here. I think it's awesome. We have a sweet sideboard as well. We got... Couple dispels, couple negates, click and disdainful strokes, those help you interact with combo and control and big mana. You got a Celestial Purge, helps you answer Blood Moons and Lilianas and Gurmag Anglers and all that good stuff to rest in peace. Uh, even though we got four Snapcaster Mages, this is one of those decks where just Snapcaster Mage might be good enough as a 2 on Ambush Viper if you've already resolved rest in peace in that matchup. Uh, two Stony Silence because just a great way to interact with Affinity and uh, KCI and Tron and all those decks. And Anger of the Gods because sometimes exiling your opponent's whole board is exactly what you need, even if you lose your Grim Lava Mancer or Figure of Destiny in the way. Uh, mostly because there's a lot of Blood Gas in the format right now. A lot of, uh, what's the, the, the Phoenixes, the Flame Wake Phoenixes with, from Hollow One. Uh, Bridgevine is definitely a deck uh, where you want to exile their threats. So definitely a lot of uses and applications for Anger of the Gods. Stormeth Dragon, also... Super sweet inclusion, not one that you see normally, but the fact is that he's uh, impervious to Path to Exile, uh, impervious to Teferi Downtick, uh, means that he can be quite good and very hard for your opponent to kill once resolved. Uh, got a Wear Tear here to just interact with any random artifact or enchantment that help that comes up uh, your way. And then is it Staticaster? Uh, deals with Lingering Souls, deals with, uh, you know, uh, Mana Dorks, deals with Blood Ghasts, deal with a whole bunch of different things that... Uh, you don't really want to deal with uh, out of a deck like this. You don't necessarily want to sweep your opponent's board because you're developing your own board, right? So is it Staticaster can often be a one-sided sweeper against certain types of decks. All right. So this is, we just covered Jeskai Tempo, uh, Shoda's recent uh, GP Top 4 list. I think it's a sweet, sweet deck. I'm very excited to try it out for this one and done series. Um, I think this is perfect because the one and done series is designed to uh, give these kind of breakthrough decks sometimes a chance. Not only decks that uh, need to be developed or or haven't been played, which this deck, I would argue, has not necessarily been developed or played. Obviously, you top for a GP, you're doing really well with it, but it's possible that there, this, this deck just needs to be developed more and it could even be a stronger contender than it already is. Uh, but this is not a deck you've, we've ever seen, so uh, I think the One and Done series is a perfect way to showcase it because, first of all, I'm not a perfect pilot, so I'm probably going to make a mistake or two. And it's better to make, you know, not be familiar with a deck for a single match rather than, you know, three or five matches. At least that's my philosophy. I think that's going to end up to be slightly better for you guys to watch. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about the deck, but stick around for uh, the first match uh, coming up in just, well, first match, first and only match in this one and done series coming up in just a moment. I will see you all soon. Okay, folks, welcome to today's one-and-done series with uh, Shota's 
recent GP top four just guy tempo list. We won the die roll. Let's let's see what spice we got here. Oh yeah, we got that turn one figure of destiny. Don't mind if I do. We also got a pretty solid uh, turn three here. So if we can make it there, that's gonna be kind of nice. Hopefully, our figure of destiny doesn't add a bolt, and we could pump it up next turn to be a uh, a uh, what you call it a two two. We can also keep a Path to Exile next turn if we need to, if it's the right matchup. Or we can just... Ooh, control. Oh, we're even going to curve out here. Don't mind if I curve out. Let's go ahead and uh, power this big boy up here. And swing. Uh, if we can slam Geist and just dodge Terminus for a little bit... Gotta believe we're gonna be in a good spot. Start with an attack, though. Yeah, I think I'm not going to play around Terminus here, or Logic Knot. Hopefully we don't get tagged by Logic Knot here. Uh, our opponent is fetching, they're getting an island. Yeah, this seems like we're getting Logic Knotted, huh? That's a shame. I mean, Blue White Miracles doesn't play that many copies of it, so this is this is definitely an unfortunate trade for us, but Usually they play like two Logic Knot, one Negate, sometimes even just one Logic Knot, one Negate. So here I think I'll just be very happy to keep attacking. Eventually we can try to burn our opponent out ideally. I wonder if my opponent is considering casting a Condemn. Nah. No, 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 no. Again, lists have been moving more towards... Oh gosh, do they have Path to Exile here too? Do they have, just have the perfect anti-aggro? Okay, well, looks like we might just lose everything. Alright, yep. Fair enough. Fair enough, and then our opponent slams Jace. Condemn is still alive. Yup. Ah, uh, don't Jace me, bro. Oh, come on. Yeah. I think my opponent had a, a pretty sick, sick curve here. Alright, well we just, we just definitely slam Gideon here, right? Start making 2-2s. Two Playing lands out. Uh, this Colonnade will get tagged by this Path to Exile eventually. Alright, now they're going to brainstorm. Here comes Teferi. At least that's my guess. Yeah, they needed two one-mana removal spells to blow us out with the uh, the whole Spell Queller play. And they already burned through one of their Logic Knots, and they usually only play two. So I didn't think it was that... I guess they still have four Path to Exiles in the deck, technically, because we saw Condemn. It's not like they used Path to Exile and then, like, Condemned us. So maybe it was wrong to go for that. Maybe I should have just let it happen and called it a day, but it's weird because the Path to Exile actually helped us cast this Gideon. The question is, will this Gideon actually be worth it in the end? Alright, let's see what you got. Another Spell Queller wouldn't be such a horrible pickup. We could uptick Gideon and attack without, well, maybe with fear of getting double path, but... Hmm. That's probably the worst land to draw here, because my opponent does have Field of Ruin already. So here, I think I'll just go ahead and... Zero. We could get Terminus next turn, which is why I think I'm going to go after this, uh, this Jace. Yeah, in fear of Terminus, I probably don't want to play this figure of Destiny. Probably want to do this on their upkeep. The Helix. I 
Guess we play the island. <laughs> if they field have ruined me, that probably tells me they don't have terminus, huh? Cryptic command. Let's just go ahead and clear the Jace while we can. Maybe I was supposed to tap... Uh, I guess they're not going to attack with Colonnade now, because there's no point. Alright, no Terminus. That's, uh... At least not yet. It could just be a Hardcast Terminus. But Hardcast Terminus, then we just replay Gideon? Can't possibly be... Can't, can't possibly be that good. Now, they could Field of Ruin me and then play another Jace. Also, not the best in the face of two Knight Allies. Alright, Double White. Oh god, do they just have the negate? They have the negate for the Gideon on the on the comeback? I mean I guess I try it. If they wanna spend their turn colonating my Gideon, I think I'm happy with that. <clears throat> Opt in response to figure of destiny? That seems wrong. What if they hit terminus? <clears throat> it's a shame that Gideon is gonna die here, but again, it doesn't mean my point my opponent will tap out for that. And that means we have quite a few opportunities to get some damage in here. So a four mana, make a two two, tap my opponent out. Seems pretty fine. Looks like my opponent doesn't go for that. Fairy. Interesting. Interesting. So they're they're plussing. Let's go ahead go ahead and make our figure of destiny a two two. Bonus we're probably gonna untap Field of Ruin plus Hall of Found unless the Ah, okay. So keeping up their options here. Ooh, spell queller. Does that mean we win? We can go plus Gideon, attack for 9, Helix plus Spell Queller. Unless my opponent again has... They could have a Snapcaster Mage. That That is also, I think, lethal. Although, no, it's not because we only have one white mana available. Oh god, but an Instant Speed Terminus here would just be the nuts. Just the nuts. Yeah, Snapcaster Mage, I'm going to go ahead and tag that with a Spell Queller. My opponent needs to have Path to Exile right here to do just about anything. Obviously, I'm going to wait for damage to go through here. I'm going to Helix my opponent's face and hope my opponent doesn't have anything here. Wow. Even though our opponent interacted with us on every level that we thought would be game over, we were able to close out the game. I am impressed. <laughs> I am very impressed. Very, very impressed. Wow. So, for this matchup, click seems pretty good. Negates also don't seem too bad. Disdainful Stroke could be reasonable. Dispel, definitely somewhere we want to be. Uh, Wear Terror hits like Search for Escanta, Detention Sphere. Doesn't seem too relevant to me. And Stormbreath Dragon could also be quite good in this matchup. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards we want to bring in. Uh, I don't think we want to side out our burn entirely. I think our burn is going to be pretty important. I think when these games go along, I uh, don't know if we want cards like Spell Pierce, but it also punishes our opponent for relying on early Condemns and Path to Exiles. We can probably cut Grim Lava Mancer. Doesn't seem like the matchup for Grim Lava Mancer. Um, I think this top end is, is, is perfect. Mana Leak, again, might be kind of poor if the game goes long, and we're bringing in, like, Negates and things like that, so... Kind of like negates over mana leaks. I kind of like clicking here, and I definitely want the dispels to fight over potential counter magic, as well as removal. Yeah, spell pierce just doesn't seem that good to me. Although spell pierce does hit their planeswalkers, so does disdainful stroke, right? So I think we, there's one more cut in here. Probably just cut a lightning bolt. I like having, ooh, maybe just cut a couple paths, right? Ooh, maybe maybe I want to cut a couple paths instead because it, it hits colonnade which does stop us from attacking quite a bit 
Maybe I want all of my burn in this matchup. Maybe like one spell pierce. This is like a gotcha effect. Especially on turn one. Yeah, I kind of like spell pierce being like a one mana counter Jace as well as Teferi. That seems kind of cool. Keeping all the burn, stay aggressively slanted, but have some interaction for the stack. Okay, all right. Kind of like that sideboard plan. Whew, this hand. I guess we keep it? <laughs> I mean, two Snapcaster Mage is not the worst. If we can find some bolts or something, we can go bolt snap bolts. If we can find some counter magic, we can also snap that back. Find some ops, we can snap those back. All right. Looks like we're just on the on the figure of destiny plan. For a second, I thought I, I played the wrong land. All right, let's see how they scry. Scry one to the top, one to the bottom. All right, ancestral vision, no white mana. That is very interesting. So let's just get aggressive here. <laughs> Play our. <laughs> Our army of two mana 2-2s two that we can play over multiple turns. Kind of cool. So next turn, it's only a one mana investment. We also found the lightning bolt for bolt snap bolt. Doesn't seem too bad. Let's see if our opponent finds their white mana here. Maybe it's a field of ruin as their last. What are you doing, opponent? What are you doing? Um. And I think my opponent conceded here. Wow, uh, <laughs> I guess 2-2 two -two beatdowns when your opponent is a mono blue control deck uh, is not the worst, <laughs> it turns out. I don't think that that, that game highlighted uh, the match very much. I also don't think that this is something that I'm not going to show you guys, so I think we still had a pretty good game one there to show. Uh, sad that we didn't have a solid game two or potentially game three to see more this deck in action some more. Uh, but one thing I noticed, Figure of Destiny, pretty good magic card. Especially when your opponents are playing slow control decks. Um, and you have the time to sink, in, to sink mana into it. Um, but overall, really enjoy this deck. That's going to be today's One and Done series. Uh, if you liked this video, let me know in the comments below. I will try to feature it again in the future. Maybe for an Under the Microscope series. Maybe for a friendly league. Maybe for a competitive league. I don't know. But you guys let me know if this is a deck that you're interested in. You want to see it more. Uh, I think it's pretty darn sweet. Uh, and it's definitely on my radar for decks I might revisit in the future. Uh, and I will definitely consider revisiting it more if you guys like it. Uh, similar to how I mentioned the blue-black control from the one-and-done series last week. Um, that's Or maybe it was two weeks ago at this point. Point is, that's that's a deck that is on my radar for playing sometime in the future. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let me know if you uh, want to see this deck again. And hope you enjoyed today's one-and-done series. Or probably this week's. I don't think I have another one-and-done series planned uh, for the rest of this week. Uh, but, again, <laughs> let's cut it off there. I tend to ramble. <laughs> but the point is... Uh, I really enjoyed playing it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. I will see you all another time. Bye-bye.